Hello， 大家好，我系 Professor Lisa Lang， 我系岭南大学文化研究系嘅一个老师。我哋文化研究其实咧都系一啲即系直住从日常生活啦，所接触嘅东西，包括系媒体啦。誒普及文化啦，甚至係一啲嘅誒生活性嘅一啲嘅課題咧，去思考一啲更加大嘅啲議題，誒包括文化啦、社會啦、政治啦，甚至經濟嘅啲課題嘅。而我哋嘅課程嘅特色咧，就係、是、誒不斷係去邀請一啲唔同嘅一啲業界嘅人士啦，嚇，甚至係一啲嘅即係誒知名啲嘅人士咧，去進入我哋嘅課堂裏邊咧，係作出佢哋嘅分享。而誒，我哋咧即將會係推出一系列嘅一啲嘅短片咧，係記錄一啲呢啲嘅誒所謂客席嘅分享咧，係誒希望可以誒令大家更加明白我哋嗰個課程嘅宗旨啦，以及係我哋一啲嘅課堂嘅內容，使到咧大家係即使未係去參與我哋嘅課堂咧，都可以更加了解我哋嗰個關注同埋我哋一啲嘅興趣嘅。咁、呃、或者你哋都可以係去 follow 我哋嗰個社交媒體嘅網站啦，係、啊、更加了解我哋呢、這個即係、就是、學士嘅課程嚇，同、啊、埋我哋一啲嘅即係科目嘅嚇。咁啊,啊，請大家去 enjoy。What is the relationship between new media representations and gender? How can we understand gender and sexual politics in everyday media practices? What are the variant notions of gender and sexuality in diverse Asian societies? This course will draw upon theoretical strands in cultural studies, gender and sexuality studies, media and communication, history, queer studies, and sociology as critical tools to understand the production and distribution of gendered messages within media texts. Through a close reading of cultural representations, students will learn to analyze the meanings behind media representations on heterosexuality and non-normative sexualities. Students will not only be learning the key theoretical approaches and emerging debates in the field of media, gender, and sexuality studies, but rather they will contribute by coming up with new interpretations of media. Representations and generating new content in social media during the course. Okay. Hi, good morning. Good morning.、Uh, yeah, let's let us introduce ourselves. Um, Gaxiao Xi. Um, so I'm Beatrix. Uh, I'm an artist and publisher of Small Chain Press. I、um, run an independent art publishing house、uh, by myself. About like、uh, nearly ten years ago. <laughs>、uh, And then,、um, so I met Caitlin in two thousand eighteen, and、um, while、well, I was giving a talk at Parasite, and Caitlin was one of the participants, and、um, yeah, that's how our friendship starts. And、um, Caitlin, you want to talk about yourself? Yeah,、um, I make comics, and I'm also helping do tricks together with Queries Library. It's just sort of a kind of. Free roving, very independent collective that we just kind of made as an umbrella to house all of these different like zines and publications, which we'll show you more of later.、Um, I think because we were both kind of looking for a group that would like sit at the intersection between queer identity and self publishing, because there was multiple efforts devoted to both those things, but not a lot of things at the overlap. So、mm -hmm. I think that it was kind of born out of that. As well as,、um, I guess we should give some context as to like the book banning. Sure. So、um, I'm not sure if all of you students were here in Hong Kong in 2018, but there was like a very forcible removal of、uh, these children's books with queer themes. I mean, in Singapore it was even more dramatic. This penguin book here on the left, they actually had them destroyed in Singapore, which is like, like, like burning books is like a really serious matter.、Um, but I think that. I don't know. The impression that we got from this incident was that、uh, there's actually a desire to remove or not disclose people's、um, gender and sexual identity in a way that it's like censorship. So、um, we were just met at the time. We were both kind of saying like, wouldn't it be helpful if we could like actually take the queer books and zines that we both own and like 
put them mm-hmm. in a public space because there's actually been an active removal of queer voices. Yeah. And also uh, by the time when, uh, because this was happening at the public library, and we consider that public library, I mean, they they um, owned or they um, used uh, uh, public resources to um, uh, for the for the citizens, and we think that um, so the the um, while they are doing this um, close tax. Um, Without asking or without the permission from the or um, to to the public, and and we and I and we think that this is considered a right of uh, for the citizens if we could participate to how we're going to use the resources in the public library as public resources. So um, yeah, so we we uh, this incident actually inspired us to think about okay, what is the function of library uh, now in our day, and what does it mean for the younger generation of using these material as their as their um, uh, resources to uh, um, to enrich and empower themselves um, without um, any restrictions? And so we think, as as Caitlin mentioned, we um, uh, the most of the library uh, library uh, material in the queries library is basically our um, um, our book our books and scenes that we have been collected for uh, from time to time and uh, I think we while we are doing the mobile um, f- way of uh, showing these books we hopefully could um, reach out to more different people and in different spaces of from their ages and different genders and etc. Um, yeah, in terms of what, as a collective, what do we do? Um, Beatrix came up with the idea for having this slide as a kind of overview, which I think is really helpful because it's kind of a lot of different things. So um, we've got a number of past like exhibitions and public programs on display here, but we're going to go into more detail about each of these different phrases. You want to start with collect? Yeah. Uh, so uh, as as we both uh, uh, mentioned that uh, the collections are basically uh, the material we have been collected in our bookshelves. Mm-hmm. And well, I, what was your first uh, material you have? You remember, like the, that relate with queer um, content? I have it right <laughs> behind me. Actually, I can go get it. It's it's Skim, which is a graphic novel by Julian and Mariko Tamaki, and I just. I mean, I bought this book when I was 16 at the now defunct page one in Times Square. But um, I don't know. I think everyone remembers your first queer book because it it always has a big impact on you emotionally. So this is the first one I remember adding to the collection. And then we made these like stickers to (laughs) delineate those things. What about yours? You had a lot of Girls Like Us magazine. Uh, Yeah, I have. um, uh, I think my first uh, queer content, which I consider is... uh, one of the comic from Lao Lei Lei, and then the other one is, uh, I uh, um, I don't think we have this one in our library. I I don't know why, but it's kind of lost somewhere while I was moving. Mm-hmm. But the other one was um, <clears throat> the um, drag queen uh, catalog, which I got from one of in one of my trip with my parents going to uh, Bangkok. And that was my first experience watching the drag queen show, which was super excited. And then, so everybody in the show, and then they were distributed a, a, a catalog, like a like a almost like an album, like a year which show. Kind of no, it's it's probably like twenty something pages, yeah, and then that. with all the pictures, like beautiful pictures of the drag queens that I'm going to see tonight. And it was like, yeah, that was my. <laughs> My first uh, contact of um, drag queen, and that was super nice. And yeah, so these are um, the, like for such materials that we have from diff- uh, co- which we collected from different backgrounds and uh, like in our, gro- uh, our grow up period mm-hmm. and when we meet people or going to different places that yeah, are but precious yes. for us. Yeah, yeah. So we 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 wanted to share these stories or, or material through these materials to to pe- different people while we show in the library okay so this play uh mobility yeah <laughs> i think that it was important for us that the library is movable because 
I think most of you who have had experiences trying to uh, set up a space in Hong Kong know that it is very difficult to um, like financially sustain a stake in a public space. So what we decided to do was to just uh, keep moving the library wherever we were allowed to go, which turns out to be kind of a number of places actually. So we set up things, let's see, I think it's in our pictures. We don't have pictures of all of them here, but we've been set up in the basement of like the Eden Hotel in Hong Kong, um, Mill 6, the Center for Heritage Arts and Textiles in Hong Kong, basically, and Parasite, the contemporary art space. It's a lot of cultural spaces, but anywhere that allows us to put these books into a public space feels like a good kind of display because we also don't monitor the space that much. Not, well, I mean, this has only resulted in one person stealing a book over the years, which is not so bad, but it's more because we want people to like naturally feel inclined to discover these materials on their own. And we don't want people to like feel pressured like they might do in like a museum or a gallery. So the reading corners function as like very like come as you go, come come mm -hmm. as you are spaces. Mm -hmm. Like there's this little picture here in the courtyard of Daigun where people, we, we gave people lights and they could like read at nighttime in their own time. So it was quite a relaxed atmosphere. We just don't want it to feel like an institution, like school or like mm. museum, I guess. It was in one of the Daigun uh, night programs that uh, they did it regularly on every second Friday night. So that, that was one occasion that they invited us to do something at the back um, in that evening. And then we, ch we t intentionally choose, chose the backyard as, um, yeah, as the, this space for curious library so um we thought of hey what are we going to do in the summer night it must be nice to have an outdoor something like a camping experience so we brought all these camping lights as you can see like they're all movable so you could bring your own little uh lights with you and then read and then while you're reading and uh, also in the night you don't really see who is next to you so it's another <laughs> like very nice experience to interact you know strangers or maybe your friends and yeah it's quite romantic experience and um gathering is another principle of ours uh oh uh so besides uh we um uh set up places in um different cultural institutes and one of one of the places where we met m many of our uh uh, how to say like our comrades in mm -hmm. publishing and also in uh um that that was uh, in different uh art book, art book fairs and yeah. scene fairs so um yeah i think for for it we usually just uh did like trying to apply to different um art book fairs and scene fairs and which we could uh go along with uh our other mates from zinku and like people who are also making scenes and um yeah so that, i think that experience brought us a lot of friendships and possibilities that we could not just uh showing the materials to hong kong like to people who live in hong kong but also to a broader audiences that are from from um, overseas and um mm -hmm. yeah there's there's a photo here from when we went to osaka in the top corner mm -hmm. so it's surprising where the library can take us there's also a photo here from the Chinese Culture Center of San Francisco, who invited us to be in a group exhibition. So it's kind of surreal. Like in the bottom uh, left corner, we did a lexicon workshop in Hong Kong with people in 2019, where we mm -hmm. asked like an intergenerational group of queer people to share their like words, like words related to their experience of being queer in Cantonese. Also, someone came sharing Portuguese and then some Mandarin and some mm -hmm. English. And then later on, this lexicon was partially exhibited in San Francisco at the Chinese Cultural Center of San Francisco. So it's sort of like, there's kind of like this mobile diaspora thing where we don't really know where the ideas we make will go, but it's kind of nice to think of the ideas and the library as like free to roam. Mm -hmm. So I guess, yeah, that's why gathering is important to get the collaboration of people yeah. near us and I think to us. There are still a lot of things that we wanted to do for the community and, and mm -hmm. um, through the experience, we also learn um, from uh, learn more uh, the queer history and and the connections with different people. Like what have we done in in uh, in Hong Kong? Basically, for instance, like it's a place where we grew up, and then but what is the queer history here? So mm -hmm. we wanted to do it step by step and, and keep it uh, in 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 its own place by through um our 
library displays, like while, while, uh, how, they, how it moves and also by the time how we connect with different people. So, um, and also, uh, yeah, that, that was reading. Mm -hmm. uh, so reading and displaying, it's been yeah. like quite overlapping. Okay, so before we move ahead of talk, telling more about the queries library, maybe we could talk about what scene is because this is uh, one of the main material, like the or the category that we mm -hmm. we uh, that are in our collections. I'm not sure how many of our students know about scenes, but it seems scenes has been um, a word uh, circulated in young young younger generations these days. Although it it's appeared in the in the seven. 50s, early 50s in the West, mm -hmm. um, and then slowly during different uh, social movement or, or like different kind of like feminism movement and and then um, some subcultural um, phenomenon like uh, people all of a sudden they they uh, created a lot of sci-fi comics and and scenes and you know with this sci-fi content. And then, um, yeah, so scene has been in every uh, cultural, like, uh, um, throughout the history. And then these days, I think probably in the last six years, I guess, like, um, yeah, I think probably around, like, 2013. Mm -hmm. And uh, 2015, technically, I think, like, while we are looking back the, a little bit of of how did we all meet and then and then slowly to introduce scenes to the public. Um, and yeah, I think it, it was about 2015 that all of a sudden there are more people know about scenes and in the media and also um, in the cultural uh, circle that are more people aware of what scene is. And then, so um, with, uh, um, so making scene is for everyone, and it, it is uh, one of the most liberate uh, media that we could use it or create it. And it's it's based uh, it comes from the DIY culture. Mm -hmm. So everyone, every ages, every gender of people are free, and you're supposed to make your own scenes for different reasons without any one pushes you, or you don't need to get a permission of doing it. Mm -hmm. So this this. Uh, images is, is um, there are some like small uh, sentences which mm -hmm. I was trying to think of when I make scenes or when when what 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 I imagine making scene it it, it, it could be and so basically when we learn about scene it is without um, first it's not uh, mainly for sale I mean you could sell it but for it's it's for for your own support to make mm -hmm. your own uh, to make your next scenes mm -hmm. so it's for your own sustainability and it's not purely for commercial purpose so making a scene the most significant difference with magazine it hurts it's, it sounds similar is um make a magazine is with uh commercial purpose so mostly mm -hmm. you will see uh advertisement in magazines but you won't see advertisement in the scene because yeah it, you you created all the contents and you you don't supposed to um uh get uh to earn the profit from the ad advertisement and um get them what 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 does it sound uh familiar to you here i quite like the if this is like a zine <laughs> manifesto of sorts i think i like the idea that zines are small but not necessary i kind of think that that's a nice approach to art making and self-publishing that's kind of being lost in this idea of like a very flattened media landscape that we're in requiring people to have very instantaneous almost like viral reactions to media but zines can be a form of like slow media that doesn't ask you to like just you know like like or dislike like there's something that's more nuanced that's possible when you do something in like a small like a small print run and distribute it amongst a small group of people, it feels like there's something more cherished, kind of like when you shoot a roll of film on like a camera and you only have 30 photos. Because if you have infinite photos slash infinite digital media, you can't always like remember what's happening because it's like too much media. So I feel like zines is kind of a way to like create a, a slow form of um, digestible, tangible material media for me at least. And I, yeah, zines love bookstores, CD shops and galleries. So I was like, Zines also sometimes insist on physical space because you're trading them through the mail or through the shops. And like, 
even though you can technically maybe reach less people, maybe the impact you have is a little bit more uh, sentimental, significant. And uh, the next photo we have in our slideshow is um, something that Zine Coop did at Hapse, a form society in Sunsuri Bowl, which was like a big, like, what is Zine kind of showcase. So you can see even from the table, there's like a lot of different types of designs and illustrations and artistic like approaches that people in Hong Kong and around the world come up with for zines. And the thing is making scene, it doesn't require to have a special like skills. Although yeah. many of our like scenes, their friends, they are designers or artists or mm. uh, writers, mm. but you don't necessarily have all these skills. I mean, if you don't, if you like to take pictures with your phones or uh, you just want, you like, you, you like to write poetry or, you know, like, or just some notes from your daily life, you could, use these materials as your, um, for your content of making the scene. And um, Beatrix mm. kind of, and the Zine Cube team kind of devised this sort of like, what would we call this? Like a zine cone period pyramid that is like basically showing the circles of influence around zine making that are like, this is not hierarchical. It's not mm. like the top is better than the bottom. It's more yeah. just like, trying to like spatially organize like the different reach of different zines. So Beatrix has actually given some examples across the, the pyramid. So this, this cone comes from uh, uh, me and my uh, friends who are a part of the zine group and uh, a group of zinesters. And uh, so we have, as the same as Queries Library, we first have a uh, start with our collection mm. and then we all gather um, our, our collection into one so there was one day uh, we were invited to an exhibition uh, to show to do a showcase of all the scenes we have like basically the zinc collection in macau in macau and so this is this gives us a very good opportunity of looking back of of looking at all of our material okay what are all these scenes about like why we collect them and what are all these contents like why people make scene so we try to categorize them and look at every every each of it and and then try to separate uh make division of okay um this is something maybe the, from the content um uh yeah from looking into the content that some people they make scenes of because they want it or they they try to make their own trying to tell their own stories like for instance this one uh, a scene to call Cha, and then she um, she says she's a pretty um, not confident person, and then not, like um, she often have this fail experience in her daily life. So this is a just a very simple idea and a reason for her to make a scene about fail, you know, in general. Like it doesn't have to be real or not, but just an mm. experience, like how she looked into from her own experience and and make it as a scene. So we start with self because we make scenes from ourselves, like from our own perspective of, um, of telling our own stories. And next one. So there, you, you can see there are like some between self, community and, and uh, global, global. So there mm -hmm. it, it, it's a, it's a, it's a, direction of looking from yourself and to a much uh, to a broader broader uh, 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 area of people like reach out to more broader sense of uh, surroundings so um, so between the these these um, le different levels there are plus so what does it mean is something between yourself and community mm -hmm. so be be before the community you probably in in interact with friends or your uh, small uh, yeah the your your community that you you belongs to so um this is something you started to open up more stories uh stepping out from yourself but still telling stories about your your uh small circles and then community so we consider that um community is like a different tribe of stories that you wanted to tell to or share the experiences with different people so we think of uh yeah uh this this category it, it could apply to uh, to uh, LGBTQ community. That, for instance, we uh, had collected um, one of our collection is uh, Feng Lao. It's um is a uh, um uh is a zine that had published uh made that first pub, uh, um um published uh, released in two thousand eighteen. 
I think it was 19 at the Queer Culture and Literary Festival. Mm. Yeah, so, uh, and they're still making the second one. And uh, Kayla, you want to tell a little bit of the phone wall? Yeah, um, mm. the founders, Kayla and Erica, really wanted there to be a kind of uh, feminist response mm. to uh, questions of gender and sexuality in Hong Kong, I guess, namely because uh, on some level, they felt that a lot of the public dialogue about queerness in Cantonese and Hong Kong focused on men. Um, so they wanted to add uh, also a broader range of experiences from people who are um, transgender and, and women. And it sort of feels like a much needed kind of different voice because I think that it's um, nice to uh, just have uh, a more intersectional feminist response to the idea of queerness in Hong Kong because I guess the media narrative about it is also very much focused on um, marriage, which is really important, but also they wanted to talk about things to do with like uh, personal aesthetics and identity and, and sexuality and um, kind of like visual culture. So I quite like this magazine because it's very designed and it's very like artistically thought out. It doesn't feel like information so much as like, an expression. Mm. So that's kind of rare in magazines, I guess. Yeah, and basically, uh, um, the two editor and founder they uh, um, support like financially support by themselves. Uh, and so the next one uh, after they sold the first issues, like sold out, I think they were printed like because it's it's a small print of a small number of prints. It was about three thousand, uh, three hundred mm -hmm. in three hundred. So they run out pretty fast in mostly uh in circulated in the queer community and also there are small numbers circulated to uh taiwan and um some asian countries and um so the next one they're going to to uh they they, they did a uh, uh fundraising for, mm -hmm. the, for the second issue and hopefully it will be releasing soon in this year yeah from what they told and yeah and so um uh, so for Curious Library, besides we did the uh, 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 mobile library, we also try to uh, make our own scenes. And this one you're looking at is um, it's a it's called Curious Lexicon. It's um, it's not intentionally uh, we wanted to make a scene at first, but it is a platform. It's a public engaged platform that um, we will share the link later in our uh, in our presentation that you everyone could go up to uh, share with us your words that you re which related with your queer experiences either you have or your friends or you heard or you know your life from um, all kinds of different sources you get and just share with us and and so from this um, uh, like quite a huge data bank of, of collecting all the words we have we pick up just a, uh, just a few of them and make it out as a zine and we got this um our friend Tiff Tiff Chen. Chen to um, they did the illustrations yeah it's digitally. very nice it was very creative response mm -hmm. so it was nice to invite someone to uh respond to what these words might be meaning to them yeah should we skip to this one you think and the yeah, zine yeah, pyramid? yeah sure well, well let, let's go ahead with our own yeah so community plus you want to talk a little bit about how the scene relates to that? I like the scene; it's cool. Yeah. So, community is, is um, uh, we, 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 when we look at the scene collection, uh, the the scenes we have, um, there are there are uh, 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 quite a few of them are looking at uh, the the living surroundings or the from the urban environment, and we especially think that oh, this is how like using photography or drawing, you know, illustrations or writing. There are many people come up when they. When they um, uh, when they uh, uh, live um, when they have uh, spending long enough time in the neighborhood and mm -hmm. and interacting with uh, the surroundings of like maybe where you work or you know that you 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 have enough of observation and so this is this um, is so creative this just is the alphabet to, right yeah there's an alphabet uh, collection from one of the scenes there's a from a. Bangkok. CD. So from different observations, like the angle that he got, and you could see like uh, almost like the the alphabet shape. Yeah. Of, yeah, it's quite a nice collection of words. And community plus. So some people they are a fan, just pure fan of something. You know, I you could agree. be a fan of anything. Like these days in Hong Kong, many people like a fan of Mira. 
this boy band, like none of us are <laughs> their fan, but yeah, they are fans. Their fans are everywhere. So at fans love, of anything, fans. like fans of, I don't know, fans of an orange or fans of <laughs> fans of a movie stars. And yeah, so um one of our friends called Kylie Chan, she is mm. a fan of like particular some movie male stars, yeah. uh, movie stars like um Takashi Kanashiro. Takashi Kanashiro. And here's her Keanu, Keanu Reeves. Reeves and then this very nicely Japanese uh, actors. We forgot the name, but yeah. Mm. So she, she did this scene especially to um, dedicated to all these actors. And she said, hopefully one day the, her scene could be could be rich. Oh. I think it's possible. Yeah, I, th- I, I think so too. In this media yeah, landscape. All of them, yeah. I think she just sent to that. So this is kind of like agents. cultural commentary, I guess. Yes. And then our friend Forrest, who goes by Four Res, he makes a lot of zines related right. to cinema and movies. He's and a music. big movie head. Yeah. yeah, so these are some other zines that kind of situated at the intersection of the self and broader culture. Mm-hmm. Um, and then so for the bottom one is uh, global social, movements. Global social mm-hmm. movement or like more broader sense of uh, uh talking about things of your society and, mm. and, and some global issues and so um is uh so i um uh, there there's a book uh yeah uh, um uh, an essay um collection, which yeah. yeah collection that uh, published in 2020 um after the 2019 movement and i'm lucky enough to work with uh, a writer and editor holmes chan and he had um, uh, collected uh, from his colleague and his uh, acquaintances that um, also uh, at uh, journalists in, in the front line uh, mm-hmm. during the movement and uh, and they're all from the same generation. Um, so uh, every of them, they, they, they wrote their own uh, essays um, during the movement. And mm-hmm. so these articles that are not uh, these essays are not the the essays uh, that are usually published in the media, but they are written for for their own cause. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, it wasn't like news; it was more like right. a, a personal response from the experience from the of experience. journalists yeah. who might be going through a bit of like post traumatic stress or just like mm-hmm. processing around the various elements. Like there's one journalist who wrote about his experience of growing up on a university campus. Actually, mm-hmm. I think it was Zhongdai ICU. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. his experience oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, of uh, reporting about the protests as an adult and the kind of dissonance about that. Mm-hmm. So they were very like affective um, um, sort of subjective responses that we really thought were much needed because the media landscape is very flattening about mm-hmm. the geopolitics um, of Hong Kong more broadly. Mm-hmm. So some of the social movement zines. Yeah, so these yeah. are um, there. There's a quite a large a number of um, quite a large number of uh, zines that we have been uh, received uh, during the the movement. Um, and uh, people they 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 just text us um, and and want us ask us if we could uh, uh, help to circulate the zines and uh, or the digital files, and then we mm-hmm. could print them out and and share with. Um, uh, uh, more people, mm-hmm. and these are some of the the, the scenes we have um, during the time. And um, yeah, they, they, we found that these uh, different people make the make their scenes in their own course. Like some of them are like just write about their experience in participating in the protest and how how you could you know like giving your own uh, self support or to other people if you got hurt or if there's some kind of like a first aid manual mm-hmm. that you um and then uh some are like um uh, as a reportage of uh, collecting news from ev- almost like every every month every mm-hmm. every other weeks and 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 put it in into a zine mm-hmm. and um and yeah, it's yeah, a big range. It's a big range. Some of them were illustrated, some of them were right. more written. And yeah, some of them use news media. So that mm-hmm. the same um, thing that's happening can result in a lot of different forms of expression through self-publishing, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, should you talk a little bit about our website? Yeah. So based on what we have just introduced earlier, I think, uh, yeah, if, you, if, if anyone interested, please go up to qrlib.net uh, to look at uh, what we have like um yeah what we have collected, collected so and 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 uh the events or the activities that we have um yeah involved with <laughs> and even though that there's um kind of a, a bit of a pause on a lot of gathering in hong kong because of the restrictions right now we did digitize our 
Parasite Reading Corner because we spend a lot of time researching the vintage queer like theater and visual culture publications in this display. And then the display was kind of closed because of mm-hmm. COVID, but then we didn't want this research not to be anywhere. So we uploaded most of it. If any of you happen to be interested in these materials, the materials themselves are not available online, but we have in-depth descriptions and interviews with the people who collected them and then we can we also have access to these materials if anyone needs them for research mm. um, let's remove the collection yep um so we have a big collection of over like 270 different holdings and this is just going to be a very uh, general overview because uh you know time is limited but it'll give you a good sort of scope of what we have in this you know queries library which is really just like a few boxes but uh it can be activated you know which is what's exciting about it um let's start with context magazine which uh i have some notes about it at the bottom that's kind of why i didn't want to like fully share a screen is because i have these speakers notes so it was it ran monthly uh, from January 1993 to November 1994 in Hong Kong. And then most of the materials were in English because it was uh, largely co-published by Barry Brandon. But at the same time, there was still like a number of Chinese and Cantonese uh, editorial and sort of like news sources in here. Um, so the content was mainly about different monosexual people like gays and lesbians, but also it was kind of like a, a kind of a, a paper meeting point. Like it was kind of like a bulletin that described all of the news events and also it's called contacts magazine because there would be these like personal ad sections like they were called the contact sections where people would write descriptions of themselves and you could kind of like write in and connect with people for pen pals or friendship or if you're looking for someone to date so that's kind of what i liked about the zine is that it was sort of functioned as a kind of like as a social network before we had digital social networks and then people would receive them in the mail the person who collected and donated these to our collection is Connie Tsan Man Wai and or Connie Chan and she's one of the founders of Hong Kong Pride and she would get these in the mail so it was like a subscription thing that was very affordable and kind of like a small scale distribution of a magazine uh here's an example of one of the contacts I mean I think the language in these is a very much a time period thing like people wouldn't really describe themselves this way now necessarily but is more like you know people would describe themselves as like oriental which is like a word that's kind of gone out of fashion but at, at least these are important time capsules to describe what people were looking for at the time mm-hmm. and there was also room for you know like more poetic kinds of writing so i think that it's nice that like this mag even this tiny magazine of like 40 to 50 pages each every month that only ran for like a year there was room for like uh both kind of more information based and artistic based forms of media um i also think that as we look at these materials we uh some of you might be quite young and might not know about certain contexts in hong kong i mean even for me this happened before i was born um but there was this really prominent um gay police officer suicide in hong kong in 1980 that kind of galvanized a lot of the conversations and awareness around gay and then subsequently queer identities in hong kong so um yeah, this incident was really tragic because, I mean, I think personally that suicide is like preventable. And as a society, there was just this, basically this incident points to the amount of shaming and social shame and humiliation around gay identities, even just something as recent as 40 years ago. And then I think this incident was actually a starting point for a lot of gay and queer people in Hong Kong to think, well, maybe we should, you know, organize around our identities because we can't have things like this just keep happening and have so much like shame around it. Um, I think 10% community is actually still active. So, but this is one of their journals, which is no longer active, but it functions as more of also community bulletin is fully in Chinese. So this was published between 93 and 98. And the 10% journal was like, as it, as it says in the name, like a journal describes things as like a little bit more serious in tones. There would be like more forms of like long form articles and reporting, but also just like sort of like social and community commentary like things about like being tb and g which are like these terms within like sort of lesbian communities about tomboys and girls so there was room for people to be exploring these kinds of things so some of the topics included things like opinion pieces personal essays as well as reportage on like what is the state of different um things in hong kong like hiv awareness or acceptance of same-sex relationships so basically things that were important to people would get reported in the 10 percent journal I mean, the statistic that like 10% of the people in the world are queer is sort of like 
a bit of an ambiguous one now, but it was kind of a popular saying, especially at the beginning of the queer rights movement. So that's why it's called 10% journal. Um, another donation that we received, this one's not from Connie, like the past few, this one was actually from our friend Po Hung. Uh, he's still active as a graphic designer and illustrator, and he designed these pamphlets for the Horizons, quote, lesbian and gay hotline. And Horizon was billed as Hong Kong's comprehensive resource on lesbian and gay counseling since 1992. So, you know, around the 90s, this is when the internet is picking up pace in Hong Kong and people are starting to have personal computers, but a lot of people don't. Most people use computers at the library at this time. So in order to get information, one of the best ways to receive support, whether it was emotional or health related, was to call this hotline and learn about different things with the people who were staffed there. So the, the hotline was actually available in both Cantonese and English, and they covered things like places to meet up, events, letters to the editor, and resource lists. And what I'm talking about here, what you're looking at, is really just like a a six page mm. fold up leaflet. So it's actually quite amazing if you think about how much information you can put it's into about something. It's like a half size of a A5. Yeah, yeah the kind of thing that you get in like a doctor's office, like a really small leaflet, mm. it packs quite a powerful impact. Um, so Poe kept these as part of his design portfolio and then very kindly shared them with us. So we have the digital scans of these. Um, oh, this is what we're showing at, at the Parasite. Parasite. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit about Alice? uh our friend <laughs> she's she's a stamp artist and she made she's basically been collecting different materials related to like 1990s queer theater because it was very important in her own personal journey to like mm. understanding her own sexuality and then one thing that she pointed out to us was that like prominent actors in hong kong would actually act in these plays mm. and it wasn't as if they would feel like a lot of shame about doing these kinds of roles so Basically, she kind of helped, at least for me, someone born in the 90s, she helped me understand that it was actually, um, theater was a space in which people could be very open about mm -hmm. gender and sexuality. And how exciting is that? And Hong Kong, to me, that's kind of a big deal, actually. <laughs> so, because li like literature and media, written media is censored very heavily. And theater mm -hmm. was kind of a, a way to kind of evade that kind of surveillance in some ways. Mm -hmm. And I remember when, when Alice shared with us these material and I asked her about, hey, um, how was like, I was so curious about how was that, that environment of mm -hmm. when, when she was going to the theater mm -hmm. and uh, it, it, was she want to make, 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 make friends with people? And then she said, no, I'm not. I said, okay, so you just go there alone? I said, yes. And what are you doing there? Um, well, I was just looking at people. Just, I'm also, I was also curious of who are the people going there, but I'm not intentionally going to make friends. I just mm -hmm. want to enjoy the show and mm -hmm. then think about like, um, yeah, her own issues. And she also shared the experience like she um, had uh, while well, she was married that time, like um, married to to a guy. And and so by the time she um, was kind of like sneaking out to watching all this theater uh, was also the time she is exploring her own sexuality. So I think it's it's quite a uh, yeah, it's quite a private uh, uh, um, story. Yeah, she was sharing. Earlier on, we talked a little bit about the query lexicon um, and the words, the kind of word cloud that we've been mm. forming. But basically, this is another part of our libraries, things mm. that we're self-publishing, even though it's a smaller part of it. I think it's definitely important. And then what you're looking at in the middle here is a mind map that was made by over 20 individuals that night in 2019. So there was kind of cheeky things like ha tao, which is like kind of a mean phrase to describe someone who's like got an okay body, but like not a very cute face. Um, or in the lesbian community, people would use things like no label to kind of be transcending just mm. the binary of like tomboys and girly girls. Non-binary, so. maybe in another. Yeah, maybe I think non-binary. Not even non-binary. Just, just, just label, no label. No label. No label yeah. at all. So these are just the kinds of things that people were contributing from their lived experiences. And it was very fruitful to hear from them. Um, yeah, so this is just some documentation of the kinds of workshops we, we'll be, we, we have been doing. We've only done two large ones so far because of the pandemic, but this one was done in 2021 in summer. And it was fun because people basically just brainstormed their own like queer um, self-imagining or journey thing. So a lot of people talked about different television shows and media that were important to them and then they presented them in this workshop. And then we made like a big uh, compilation of all of these lexicons after. Yeah, so people were making like uh, 
different charts about how they learned about different things to do with queerness and feminism and sex. So people would write about things like the tumblr.com microblogging platform, which is popular in America. And also some people used it here, including me, the internet and different Instagram channels. So the question we were asking was like, you know, what forms of media did, did you use to access your queer identity? And people actually had a lot. Some people also wrote about movies and stuff. I think we could see the changes from from the year of of of, of economy, 2019, 20, yeah, early nineties, mm -hmm. and then to now. Like, how's the changes? Are, especially on technology, <clears throat> how the technology change the way we interact with socializing, and then we explore our own sexual identity through different like, channels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we still hold on to the stuff from then because <laughs> we're we're, we're hoarders like that. Um, but yeah, this is a. This is a kind of still developing element of our lexicon. We wanted to have like a web component that people could submit their words. And although it's functioning, we haven't quite figured out how we want to display the information. So it's kind of a work in progress, but we're sort of just showing you the, the website format, which has some of the definitions like being live animated, as well as like a listing of some of the definitions. So yeah, as you can see from the list, some of them, some of the words kept in it are are ones that people have been that, that have been used in a derogatory or like a hateful way that some people have reclaimed like uh, this word here. So I think like the lexicon we wanted to we don't want to censor the lexicon because we believe that people have a right to mm. express themselves. So some of the words might be kind of uncomfortable. Even the word queer is one that people use a little bit more commonly now, but it's one that some people in the LGBT community actually don't like because it used to be a slur. But it's mm. more positive in some lights now. So in that way, the language of queerness is constantly developing and shifting. And that's kind of why we need this lexicon is to sort of track the different changes mm -hmm. and just kind of like be accepting and open-minded about all the different words that people have. And also we encourage people to, they uh, uh, contribute words um, with the same word with different meanings. Yes. You know, because every one of us, we we have our own resources or sources from from uh, hearing or learning of what these what these words mean. Mm -hmm. So based on our different personal experience, so yeah, we we encourage people to to um, give us that word with different meaning. Yeah, same words with different meanings. Yeah, and it's not necessary only in one language, but. Mm -hmm. uh, basically Chinese and, and English or other other language if yeah but we're not um we're not going to take the responsibility to translate it so just write your own uh, language yeah <laughs> um I think the final footnote I want to talk about our collection is like a lot of the things that I've already shown you focus on things from the 90s and early 2000s but I want to be clear that people are making zines about being queer like now so mm -hmm. even though we're living in this digital age. There's a lot of contemporary people making different comics, personal zines, autobio zines, culture zines, society zines today. So this is a very broad overview, but some of the things that you're looking at here, um, this is a queer person, Holly Cassio's, that's her artist name, um, her zine about loving Bruce Springsteen and discovering butch identity through Bruce Springsteen. Um, this is the comic book I mentioned earlier, Skim. This is the Singaporean playwright Joel Tan's book called Fat Shame, which is kind of an essay book about his exploration of like gay male body identity and Singapore's kind of like nationalistic response to exercise and like very anti-fat rhetoric. And for him as a self-identified bigger person, I think like this essay was a way for him to kind of push against the need that like everyone has to be skinny. He feels like very strongly that that's like a form of propaganda. Um, Making Your Mark is like a zine about different tattoo artists who are queer and how they use that form of art to express their identity. Um, On Love by Edward Lamb is like, I guess we'd call that a vintage book actually, right? Oh, uh, he published in the 90s and yeah. it's more about his uh, personal essays. Yeah, like, that's in Chinese. Yeah. Um, oh, oh. Uh, shall I shall I talk about a bit more of the like uh, some uh, important figures in in yeah. Hong Kong queer community? Like this one, Si Fei Lam Lui, is actually when when we look up the um, it's published by the uh, TGR uh, Transgender Resource Center in Hong Kong, mm -hmm. and um, it's edited and wrote wrote by uh, the founder uh, Joanne Learn. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we look at uh, the webpage of TGR, we could actually search these. Uh, uh, there are five, totally five, uh, five issues in total of uh, Si Fei Lam Lui. So from the first issue, 
in as a general lexicon, similar to, to the lexicon that we're doing, mm -hmm. um, that a collection of words that uh, explain of what different identity and pronouns. And then the other issues are uh, more focused on different um, uh, area, like uh, how, how um, Joanne has uh, uh, um, make a category of different uh, words that apply into different uh, um, way of using the words. And um, yeah, so please look at the web page and, and, and the, all these issues are downloaded for free in English and in Chinese. And uh, this one at the lower uh, right corner, in um, the photo. In, yeah, in the middle photo, you can see a two, two Chinese Chinese character combine one as like do two men like male male lam uh, mm. the words. Uh, it's published uh, in the early eighties by um, I think he's probably the first person like um, pioneer like. Uh, uh, in the LGBT community in Hong Kong called Siu Meng Kong, Shem Sha Sha is his English name. And um, yeah, he, he, he wrote this uh, uh, um, book that uh, about um, the queer history in China. Uh, we can consider that it's not the formal, like, mm -hmm. but it's his own research mm -hmm. and, he, and he collected all this material and put them in, into a book like this. And uh, I think it's right now it's out of print, mm. but uh, luckily we got a um, few issues, mm -hmm. few copies from um, Chamiji from our friend. Mm. Yeah, he is also a publisher for this book. And uh, yeah. Um, in addition to the kind of, some of the artists that we showed on the past slide, we also want to just mention like, mm. uh, publishing initiatives that are rooted in the context of Hong Kong that all of us are in right now. Um, so in addition to Feng Lao magazine, there's also our self zine, which um, I should credit the names of their founders, Harmony Yuan and Joe's. I know their first names, but I just have to check their last names. Um, they founded the zine in December, 2020. And it was this really intersectional series of conversations with people, um, both in kind of queer and trans communities asking really nuanced questions in both English and Chinese because it's a bilingual zine. And um, Joe was like kind of art directing the photography and Harmony sort of edited the textual interviews. So it's a very nice collaboration that kind of puts their finger on the pulse of what are like young queer people thinking about right now. And I really appreciated their efforts. They're going to do a second issue too. So that's mm -hmm. our self zine. And do you want to talk a little bit about what Fenceless are doing on Instagram and digital publishing? Oh, Fenceless magazine is it's not a physical magazine, but mm -hmm. it's an online, um, um, yeah, online channel which mm -hmm. we could assess on Instagram, mm -hmm. and it's um it's from what uh, it's, uh, it's developed by uh. <laughs> in Chinese, um, damn, forgot the, 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 we can share it later. Okay, we can boys share it. Boys and Girls Club. Boys and Girls Club. Girls, Boys and Girls Club. Okay, <laughs> thanks, <laughs> Denise. <laughs> yes, it, it's uh, developed by the, uh, the group and um, it under uh, like a LGBT uh, Q, um, uh, uh, department, like, as a, a, um, yeah. And um, so they just found it last year. Uh, and um, uh, so they reached out to me uh, recently of uh, doing, uh, uh, asking for an inter uh, interview of talking about my own sexuality. And, and so they uh, basically this is uh, like, um, they try to develop contents on different, on interviews to people uh, in Hong Kong and in, um, in I think there was also in Taiwan a few of the interviewees mm -hmm. and then um to to talk about like um different sexual identity and and gender through people uh, uh introducing uh people uh, uh in uh, in um in uh west and in asian context and uh, also introduce introduce some books that we could assess and um, yeah, it's quite quite a rich uh, contents of how they develop. And I know I know that the the group of uh, I mean the editorial of this magazine is small. I think there are only three people doing it. Mm. So yeah, please um, small fish. small yeah. So please um, yeah, T -T. check out check <laughs> out 
and and check out for the next uh, uh, post on Instagram. Tag them not. Just kidding. Yeah, but uh, more or less, that's kind of an overview of our library's activities and our mission, as well as uh, what we've collected. So we really appreciate everyone listening and letting us, you know, kind of crash your class today. I think we can probably open up the uh, space for questions and discussion. Um, but yeah, thank you for tuning into our presentation. Thank you so much, Kaylin and Beatrix, um, for the sharing. I, I for sure learned a lot about query library. Um, Professor Tan, do you have any like, remark or <laughs> um, comments or questions that you want to make first? No, I'll open the floor to um, our fellow uh, classmates here first, I think. But thank you, both of you, for you know, presenting such an uh, overview of history, actually, not only about the zines, but it's actually the, the history of Hong Kong's um, Hongzi, you know, community. So if anyone wants to ask questions, you can ask them in you know, Cantonese or Mandarin. We can, I'm sure we can translate. As far as I know, I think everyone can either speak Cantonese or Mandarin in this class. There are no wrong questions. Like you don't need to be patel, you really paman. Sorry, paman. I'll leave with you later. Safe space. <laughs> Safe space, yes. I guess I can begin by asking like one question, just allowing the student a little bit more time to think about questions that they may have. Um, I think media is one of the key points in our course, um, like in general. And when you guys first talked about your first queer um, reading, I was thinking what was mine and I couldn't really think of any like reading material. Um, mm -hmm. The first thing that I could think about was like TV shows like mm. the L word, queer as folk, those are like the most popular thing that um, I, I think in my high school or like university years. Um, so, so I want to first of all ask you about medium because you, um, you chose to focus on zine, which is a very underground and like um, sort of marginalized form of artistic practice. Um, but you are also thinking about through the creation of zine to, to, to gather a community, to, to, to work on um, expanding the communication between LGBTQ community within Asia and maybe in a larger geography. So how do you really understand um, the media of zine and the, the role that it plays in connecting people and in sharing experience? Um, do you digital? Do you digitize them, and do you do you um, do you provide like digital um, like form of sharing and communication? This is like the first questions that I have in mind. Should I start? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that the question of um, digital zines is a, is a challenging one because I also think that um, when you digitize a zine, like perhaps into a form of PDF, it sort of then takes the same format as like paperwork. Mm -hmm. So in some ways, it's sort of difficult sometimes because we kind of want zines to have an association of like not work <laughs> or like not something that's stressful. And in that way, I find that, of course, we we keep the materials, like the appearance of them, or at least mm -hmm. the covers of them digitized so people can browse the collections. But I do think that we operate in a kind of like slow model where we don't mind if people can only come to the reading corner and access the zines in that moment. Although of course, when people have requested digital materials, some of them that we've like scanned, like we've scanned most of Connie's collection, we definitely share that with like researchers and artists and anyone who asked for it. But at the same time, I think that um, it's kind of a fun, it's kind of fun or interesting to have a form of inefficient media that is uh, not as easily communicable because we want to have that balance between accessibility, but also pre preserving the integrity of the medium. Mm -hmm. And in some ways, I think there's some material that's meant to be digital and others that um, exist quite fruitfully in print. But then I think that also is a limitation. So um, it's one that we're challenged by like right now. Yeah, especially with this level of COVID in Hong Kong, we're wondering if we should be doing more digital programming. And usually for digital programming, we do things like artist sharings or poetry readings or talks just because 
it's a little, we find it personally, I think it's a little bit hard sometimes to enjoy and appreciate these mm. kinds of like more poetic, expressive forms mm. of printed media and digital format. Right. But yeah, it is challenging. Yeah. And I, I think during this um, period of COVID, uh, we, we actually provide us a space and time to think about like how, how fast we should move, you mm. know, how, what is the pace to, you know, interact with people. And sometimes like, even though for scenes or, you know, this media has been, uh, introduced for such a long time, but why it is still marginal, you know, like why this should be marginal. And I think which it's a time for us to think about like, why not more people doing it? Like, and, mm -hmm. and about the, the content or the subject, what, what, what are all these marginalized uh, themes mm -hmm. that we are exploring? And, um, and uh, also though, this, the, the technique of how to make scene is actually pretty simple. Like by using one sheet of paper and with several row folds and cuts, and you could easily just make a scene. So it is something that shouldn't be marginalized, and and that we encourage people to make it uh, with their own little resources, and even though without anyone like spe uh, special uh, experts to teach you how to make ones, and you could just do it at home with um, uh, simple instructions that mm -hmm. we could provide, and. Uh, so yeah, and 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 also making scene is such a medium that you could uh, um, document your or just a record of your daily life experience, your emotions. Like these days, when we lock at home for such a long time, you probably have a lot of imp image in your head or your feelings that you want to you know express. Like at home, what are you thinking? What are what are things that you usually don't think? when you go out to work or when you're just not alone. So this is, I, I think it's a very important medium that we could start restart or maybe mm -hmm. to revisit what is it about and trying to use it as something that connect with ourselves and with people that we feel, you know, connected. And mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I, um, I think for sure um, at the beginning, Kaylin also mentioned uh, like, um, digital media sometimes just providing too much media, right? Um, it's very distracting. Um, and um, what Zine can provide, I think it's a very personal touch. I notice a lot of Zines has like handwritings and like illustrations by hand. And these are like very direct, like personal contact that a Zine is providing to its reader. Um, I, I have a lot more questions to ask, but I do want to encourage the students to join in the conversation. So I will give it um, some time for the students to also come up with more questions. Or if you have any questions to ask them, actually, I think it's kind of daunting sometimes, you know, not knowing how to ask the guest speaker a question. So maybe if you have a question, we can also ask the students as well. I want to ask if students' media diet these days is like entirely through their phones or if they enjoy reading things on the computer or if any of them still buy books. I'm actually really interested in what like media is cool with the young people these days. Come <laughs> Jason. Maybe we call, call, on call names. We'll stress them sure. out. I think yeah. so. Hi. Uh, Liang Zisan, Tong Ho. Sorry. <laughs> Hi. Um, uh, Chen Wenyan, Tong Ho. Chen Wenyan, Tong Ho. Hi. 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 Hi.
系你好，我想问下你最近有冇睇紧啲咩书或者，即系多数用手机定系用？系、oh. 啊， uh, 我自己本身因为有啲 mental illness 啊，所以我系一个好坐唔定嘅人。即系如果我想睇一本书，我可能会揾一啲电影嘅 replacement 咁样咯，即系令到件事可以短啲。然後 at least 係動態啲，會令到我 focus 啲咯，或者我起碼我坐得定去睇得完個內容。如果唔係嘅話，就其實好曬，即係所以變相誒、呃，我會睇 YouTube channel， 即係可能睇誒、呃《逃毒青年》啊，即係佢哋會將一本書濃縮成一條廿分鐘嘅片，跟住再加啲剪接。咁我覺得呢個係一個二級對我嚟講啦，即係我個人而言係一個二級收嘅一個方式咯，但係。之前就可能會用一啲文章咯，即係有啲台灣嘅網站嗰啲誒評論嗰啲文章嗰啲就會多啲，因為嗰啲都係濃縮啲、速食啲咁樣咯。係嗰啲就同埋香港啲媒體就開始接得七七八八啦，即係或者誒、呃、講比較少數、少眾啲嘅 topic， 有啲 issue 嘅媒體已經收到誒、呃，即係接咗啦。咁跟住就所以就會。睇台灣咯，係啦，台灣就會就住一啲國際 issue 啊、gender、politics 啊嗰啲去做一啲評論，嗰啲對我嚟講都係即係比較速食同埋接受到咁樣咯。咁最近你有冇睇一啲咩係好誒覺得係好地下嘅嘢咧？好地下，係係係係。本身我自己係。聽 hip hop 多啲咯，即係呢啲係比較 kind of 我嘅地下多啲咯，係、嗯、啦，即係我地下啲係聽誒、呃、留意翻香港呢邊，台灣都有呢啲咁嘅 local band 啊，但係台灣嘅 local band 係成功好多嘅，我自己覺得，即係所以即係佢哋係上到位之後就好被關注咯，但係香港就。呃、地下嚟講就一直都喺地下咯，就上唔到嚟咁樣咯，咁所以就 keep 住留意咁樣咯，都係聽啲人哋唔聽嘅歌咁樣咯，係。嗯，好啊，有興趣聽下你個 playlist， 一個山卡俾你。係<笑>好啊，好啊，多謝你，<笑>多謝你分享你對咩嘢有興趣。好，誒、呃、有冇其他同學想講？係係係，誒你哋好啊，係，我想講下話咧，即係誒。呃即系醒起，我觉得我哋一一辈同学嘅阅读方式咧，其实咧，诶、呃，即系我发现好多同学都系咁噶。我哋其实唔习惯睇实体书咁样咯，即系特别系好多文字嘅实体书咁。如果漫画系 O K 嘅，但系如果系好多字咧，我哋通常买电子书睇咁样，因为诶。呃因为我哋习惯咗喺即系接触文字嘅时候，都系喺其实都系喺网络媒体多咁样。咁同埋咧，即系我,我有啲时候咧，甚至咧系咧，如果睇就算即系可能买网书咁，即系买 PDF 咁样。咁咧有啲时候咧，好似睇唔惯一集文字咧，我会将佢哋复制翻落佢个 PowerPoint 度睇。因为我上堂系睇 PowerPoint 噶嘛，咁之后咧平时、呃、要 presentation 咧都系用 PowerPoint 咧，我发觉我睇 PowerPoint 嘅速度咧系快过睇书好多噶，系啊，或者睇 IG post 都系噶，所以咧有啲时候咧为咗令自己即系阅读得快啲咧，我就会将即系我会买 PDF 书，然后咧就将啲文字咧 copy 落去 PowerPoint 或者 copy 落去、呃、即系类似 IG post 咁样嘅一啲媒体，因为嗰个字体同埋嗰个。嗰種顏色啊，反光度啊，誒、欸，嗰、那個鋪排咧，我會即係越習慣咗個閱讀方式咁樣。咁咧，但係如果係漫畫就冇呢個影響，我覺得。係，如如果係漫畫咧，就誒、欸，無論係電子書定係 I G 定係 PowerPoint 都，我覺得個閱讀速度都差唔多咁樣。同埋誒，同埋咧，即係講話，如果買書咧，其實我。我系通常买电子书咁样，或者上网有得 download 就会 download 落嚟。如果系真系去买咧，通常系我好好中意嗰本书，然后我会买翻嚟，好似做诶、呃、一个纪念品咁样，系啊，就会摆喺即系如果我系买得嗰本书咧，通常我系好中意佢，我买完之后我系会摆喺床头度，即系摆喺床头度好中意佢，想每日起身都见到佢咁样咯，系啊，咁诶。呃
。如果唔係嘅話咧，即係因為其實咧，我平時睇書都係睇慣電子熒幕咯。如果係買實體書，通常係想支持佢咯。係啊，咁、嗯、就誒誒。呃呃同埋呢，甚至有啲時候，如果我好鍾意某啲某啲書呢，我係會用即係可能係漫畫咁樣呢，我會攞嚟做 wallpaper 噶，係啊，我影低佢之後，因為想每日都見到佢，係啊，係咁，誒，係啊，唔知其他同學，人都係唔唔唔係有咁多位可以放嗰個書啦，所以如果你買書，一定要係好重要個書啦，所以我都明白。O K， 唔系有好多位放好多书。哦，系啊，系啊。啊，做 wallpaper idea。Look at it. Yeah, taking a picture and then making 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 a nice panel your wallpaper so you can look at it every day. Just like putting your partner's image in the photo. The book. Okay. <laughs> nice. Thanks. It was really interesting. What? But actually, have you ever heard about this? This one. This one. 今日系第一有冇上过堂啊？呢班我应该冇啊，定啲先。我我我之前咧上堂咧，定啲先，我哋每人都整一本先噶。哦，系啊，系咪唔识噶？定啲呢班同学系咪唔系上次嗰班嚟嘅？应该唔系嗰班嚟噶啦，已经系咯，应该好耐啦。系啊，系系。但系我有系啊，有同我哋做先啊。系有一部分同学系要做先嘅，或者亦都有睇过嘅。系系系，而家有做过嘅。点样啊？点样啊？大家反应如何？咪好玩啊！好唔好玩啊？我可唔可以分享下？好啊，好啊，嚟啊，嚟啊，嚟！我我我当年啊，我上上都读过 Dennis 个 course， 咁我整嗰本先就系关于诶 BL 文化嘅，跟住跟住我觉得都几分嘅，跟住因为点讲咧？诶、呃，好多时候我自己本身。做 B L 文化呢本先，其實係因為我自己可能有睇開啊，或者有啲興趣，不有心心。<笑>然後誒，咁、呃、但係可能冇，即係唔會去專登去做一個，可能你唔會去 Google 啊，或者你唔會去 search 一啲佢相關嘅一啲發展歷史嗰啲。但係因為嗰本，因為嗰個係 final project 啦，咁所以就誒揾咗好多資料咯，同埋我覺得成個過程都幾好玩咯。誒、呃，因為我人生未試過真係攞啲針線去縫一本書出嚟咯。跟住我，嗯，雖然過程係有一少少痛苦，咁但係我覺得誒、呃、整完出嚟係係有成功感咯。Rather than 我真係去揼一份 paper 咁樣。我都我都想分享，因为我都系上个成都有读 Dennis 个 course， 咁我整嗰个先系做 Drag Queen 嘅主题咯。跟住我都觉得，诶、呃，因为好少 final assignment 系即系要咁样整一本书出嚟啦。跟住好多时都系净系打文，我觉得我会宁愿做呢本先多过就咁打篇文咯。我觉得，诶、呃，虽然系要。即係要諗好多排版啊，或者內容上嘅嘢，但係我覺得係整完出嚟係會，雖然畫工唔係好好，或者美術方面唔係好好，但係都會好好滿足咯。即係本身由零跟住整到有本嘢出咗嚟咁樣。好多 Denise fan in this class， 好好啊，大家係啊，做先咧，其實真係試。最紧要试下做冇，同埋唔好唔好怕错咯。系、嗯、因为佢本身都冇特定嘢做先，唔可以错，唔可以错，唔系。Is there any wrong scene？ 啊，试下先 ，wrong scene。I don't know， 冇啊。Yeah， it's nice yeah.。Yeah， yeah。It seems like it's more fun than a final paper。That's what I want to say。Right。同埋我都有啲 surprise， 好多同学可能系而家要去诶， um, 即系摸一张纸或者剪。就咁剪去做一份嘢出嚟，嗰樣嘢已經係好 foreign 噶啦。係，係啊，係啊，即係嗰個 idea of touching 一本書或者睇一本書，即係頭先阿誒 Lisa 講得好啱，即係你要睇一本書或者阿陳永欣都係咁講。嗯，睇一本書係一個已經係好似好好似過時嘅嘢嚇，係、嗯、嘛、啊？因為好多嘢都 digitize 啦嘛嚇，咁、嗯、佢。咁我覺得幾有趣嘅，頭先 Lisa 有講到話啊，我將啲嘢其實都係文字，因為我要 just cut and paste 啲 words on an Instagram post， 你又睇喎
但系系一个 book format， 你就冇乜兴趣咁样去睇。咁、嗯、其实呢个都系一个 telling of， 即系一系 either 就系头先 Google 讲个 media 同个 medium 嘅 change， 或者系真系啊啊，好、嗯嗯、难讲系边样嘢系新旧咁样。我又唔系好想讲话真系、嗯、啊，先系我又唔觉得先系一个好旧嘅 form。但系喺我读大学嗰阵时 ，which is in the nineties 嗰阵时候，先系好好盛行嘅。嗯，系啦，系啦 ，80s、90s 好盛行嘅嚇，咁、啊、但系嚟到而家真系隔咗你話 twenty years more than twenty years thirty years， 咁又翻翻嚟咁樣咧，咁係幾得意嘅。咁、嗯、I guess it kind of shows that some things to come back 係咯嚇。有啲所有問題啊，啊你講咧話九十年代嗰時誒、呃，即係係好盛行咧。其實嗰時嗰個創作同埋製作嘅環境咧，即係同你。睇翻今日大家同學身處喺呢個環境，其實即當然嗰個年代冇 internet， 好似而家咁頻繁嘅用得。你覺得其實嗰個環境係咪有一個一定嘅影響？有啊有啊，我覺得嗰陣時、嗯，我記得我嗰陣時我喺誒、呃、Seattle 嘅嗰陣時，誒九十年代嗰陣時，誒、呃、做先個玩嗰陣時候，咁誒、呃、我記得嗰班朋友咧係真係會覺得個誒、呃、有好多唔同嘅人係因為你整咗本先，跟住你寄俾佢咧而識嘅。嗯咁、嗯、啊 ，community 嘅 formation 係真係咁樣，誒、嗯嗯、有一個 subcultural 嘅 zen 嘅 formation 係啦、嗯，因為你冇 social media 嗰陣時候咧，其實你平時見人咧，以前就一定係你一係去 bar， 一係去一啲 party 咁樣去見噶嘛，嚇、嗯啊、你因為你冇嗰樣嘢嘛，即係你冇 social media 嘛，咁、嗯、所以 zen 嘅好處就係因為你真係等喺個 post office 咁寄出去個感覺咧，而係有人會收，有人會回你咧，係嗰、嗯那個種 feeling 係好難。係誒唔同你真係 send 咗一個 WhatsApp message 出去，跟住有啲人好快復或者睇咗唔復咯，係、嗯、啊、嗯，你嗰種等嗰個感覺係好得意嘅嚇嚇。Which 我諗 goes back to 你頭先 in some ways 講嗰個 queer lexicon 嗰個 workshop 嘅，我就諗緊，因為最近咧我就同一啲全部都係誒、uh, 年紀好大嘅，即係六十到七十八就嚟八十歲嘅誒、um, older lesbian bisexual woman 一齊誒、uh, 比較多係做依方面嘅 research 啦。咁我同佢哋傾偈嗰陣時候，咁我就會諗起佢哋就會，佢哋係冇一個咁嘅 lexicon 嘅 idea 噶嘛嚇，即係佢哋唔會叫冇一個 identity 嘅 idea， 因為 identity 係 such a modern thing 嚇、okay. 對佢哋嚟講。咁所以佢哋就我就會諗起啊，你哋講話而家做一本先係 in some ways 個誒 idea 係 slow motion 嘅，係咁對佢哋嚟講 slow motion 就好好 common 啦。因为佢哋以前写信噶嘛，系、嗯、咪？有咩？唔系，对佢哋讲唔系好慢啦。系啦，系啦，即系佢哋觉得呢样就系 the fun about being in a relationship， 系、嗯、啦，吓就系、是、你寄信等一封信系两个礼拜以上之内嘅，吓、嗯。咁、嗯、所以系啦，系啊，系，即系你好难 imagine 呢种咁样嘅 romance。系系系啦吓，咁、嗯、所以 in some ways I think 即系你讲到话先 ，actually can be a romantic thing， which I think for 一啲年纪大啲嘅 generation 系完全系好明嘅吓呢个位吓。不过有时咧，就算我哋即系诶，除咗诶上年纪嘅朋友之外，我觉得就算我我同譬如我同 K 年咁咧，我哋都好中意收同埋写整卡啊信啊俾朋友嘅，即系唔知系咪？都<笑>系我哋都惯咗，可能啲嘢系慢啲咁啊！但系我谂系你你嗰个接收咧，即系嗰个 give and take 嗰个过程系好珍贵啊！因为可能嗰日我哋其实咁活喺而家，你点可能逃避唔用 WhatsApp 啊呢一种即系比较快速嘅沟通嘅方式？但系我哋反而会好 conscious， 就系会去谂哇，其实诶呢、呃、一种沟通嘅过程其实诶同、呃、我哋太快系啦，即系太有有好多嘢我哋根本就讲唔切。或者唔係想喺嗰個 space 度咁樣以一個咁咁樣嘅短信去表達咧，即係你係想係啊坐低，心情啲嘢唔可以用個方法講啦、嗯。係啊，即係你有啲嘢真係 pen 要要落筆，同埋你去喺一個咁樣擺低張紙又好，或者你可以諗下我我想用一張咩紙咧，我去自己整張再用紙好，或者我誒、呃、去一間靚靚地嘅文具店買張，即係有有有心機嘅嗰樣嘢係有個 face。去你可以將呢一啲你覺得好珍重，或者你可能你知道，因為嗰封嗰封信又好，幅畫好，你需要啲時間寄出去。咁所以你嗰、那個嗰件事其實佢係容許你可以 take time take time 去做咁樣咯。係啊，即係呢個係好 precious 嘅嘅過程。誒、呃，我我估我哋在座咁多位朋友應該都會好好期待，即係收到或者係會如果有時間都會想係咁樣樣，係咯，即係去去。去寄信俾朋友咁样，系
嗯、我都想加一個 idea 入嚟，因為我屋企依家開始 collect papers， 因為我哋唔想等曬啲冇用嘅紙巾，包括嗰啲 receive paper。我冇做過先咯，但係我又覺得誒、嗯，如果可以 include 呢啲 recycle paper into zin making， 之後大家可能都會開始 appreciate 身邊嗰啲睇起嚟好似垃圾嘅嘢，原來佢哋都可以 made into 好 cute 嘅 format， 好似一個一個 book 啦，或者係一個其他嘅 form， 可能都會幾有趣。我咧話説誒幾個禮拜前咧誒屋企有人確咗診啊嘛，咁咧跟住我就要被逼咧去咗隔離酒店啦，即係我冇事，但係我要係被隔隔離嗰個啦。咁跟住咧去到嗰個隔離酒店咧，佢係有嗰啲中國式嗰啲搣嗰啲藥力噶，即係一每一日搣一張嗰啲啦。咁我覺得，因為我屋企 exactly 都係有呢一種喎，即係我媽每一日好似拜神一樣咧，走去搣一張咁樣啦，即係係啦，咁啊。誒誒，佢佢呢一種係突然間我去到一個好陌生嘅地方，但我見到一個咁熟悉嘅嘢呢，反而呢令我而咦我搣我係喎、哦，我提住我自己，因為誒隔離都要隔成個禮拜咁啦，起碼都咁我就提住自己，我每一日我今日誒、呃，因為又唔出得街，咁我今日係幾時咧？咁啊逐個係啦，呢呢啲咁樣啦，即係逐個逐日搣出嚟呢。咁我就將每一日誒。呃今日過咗啦嘛，係啊，今日係三十號，你未搣，已經企咗兩天，唔<笑>好意思，而家三十號。係<笑>啦，咁我就將咧搣咗呢啲咧，儲埋咗咧，我就想做本先啦，即係呢個，嗯、即係 document 翻究竟我嗰個禮拜咧喺嗰間隔離酒店嘅生活咁樣咯。係啊，所以其實其實呢啲看似抌得嘅嘢咧，其實佢係你嘅一部分嚟嘅，係你嘅一部分嚟㗎。所以每一日我哋其實用好多嘢啊。即係好似彷彿好似自己唔存在咁呢。即係我哋存在好似淨係呢度嘅啫嘛。其實都唔係咁樣啊，我哋嘅存在係好多係經摸過好多嘢㗎。雖然我哋都要噴手，但係噴完咪又繼續摸摸完又繼續噴嘅啫嘛。所以其實大家係記住自己係存在過啊，唔好淨係存在喺呢度囉。今日我哋大家都唔係好想喺呢個 screen 度見，但係真係係囉，係啊，要記住自己存在過啊，係啊。用用唔同嘅方式記住自己存在過咯，<笑>因為見到關榮家係有個新嘢係嘛？係誒、啊呃呃、我想都係分享下我做先嘅嗰個感覺啦，因為我做先就其實我唔係特別去講一個議題，我係講自己啊，因為、呃、我以前我以前好肥嘅，咁就。俾人有 bully 啦，即系可能言语上面会话你，即系讲好多唔好听嘅说话啊咁样。跟住即系我作为一个女仔，特别我觉得一个肥嘅女仔受攻击系更加多啦。咁其实我做个先嘅时候就系喺度睇翻以前嘅自己嘅感觉，即系回想翻嗰阵时嘅经历，然后自己有啲咩感觉，咁然后再写翻出嚟，然之后。就會發覺其實即係明明我嗰陣時係一個咁唔開心、咁悲傷嘅經經歷啦。我寫我本先嘅時候，我而家反而係一個好平常嘅心態啊，或者誒、呃、會開心。即係譬如我而家已經唔同咗，唔同以前啦，即係轉變咗，會開心自己轉變咗。即係嗰個感覺係唔同咗，比起以前可能淨係會沉醉喺嗰、那個誒點解我會經歷咗啲咁嘅嘢咧？到而家我會覺得啊，好彩我經歷過啲咁嘅嘢，咁我而家先至會唔同啊嘛。咁咁再可能貼翻自己啲誒以前啲相啊，對比翻以前啲誒而家啲相啊，咁樣就會發覺啊，其實做本先係唔單止係去誒、呃、了解多啲可能誒、呃、外面可能有人同我處境一樣啊，或者呢個肥呢、這個誒、呃、叫議題或者呢、這、一個。女仔肥系系有问题嘅呢一样嘢之外，我觉得系更加了解自己咯，即系做本先都系同自己嘅对话。绝对系啊，系因为你做嘅，诶、欸，我系咪瞄咗唔系？系啊，因为因为做先其实真系最初好似我头先介绍嗰个空咧，系你由自己开始做噶嘛，系啊，你你好多时真系一种比较。好似自己同自己講緊嘢過程咁嘅，因為冇人叫你做嘅做先，即係 Dennis 同你上堂，但係佢唔一定要你做啊嘛，即係你唔做佢出嚟唔漲啊嘛。咁所以其實係你要自己想做，同埋有啲嘢係你可以諗下係咪要同人分享咯。其實先唔一定要同人分享噶，即係你自己上整完，跟住哦有一個誒咁、呃、樣嘅記錄，我同自己咁樣講咗出嚟，咁又會。舒服啲同埋清晰啲咁樣咯，即係直至到你覺得，咦！我真係好好想將呢啲嘢，其實都誒唔、呃、介意，可能同同學或者你嘅身邊朋友
或者甚至係在一啲唔識嘅人去分享，其實。即係都可以咯，係啊。不過最緊要係你分享嘅時候要誒諗翻自己嘅感受係咪一個、呃、安全嘅區域咯。因為有啲嘢係我可能太私人咧，我唔係好想太多人知咁樣。即係起碼唔了解你嘅人知嘅時候咧，你又會承受到另外一種嘅即係傷害或者 bullying 咁樣。係咁，所以我哋都誒、呃、即係做先嗰時會諗下誒誒係咯點樣 distribute 咯，有時都會係嗯。好啊，咁今日先多謝 Caitlin 同埋 Beatrix， 係啊，花咁多時間同我哋講關於成個 Zen Overview of 香港嘅 Zen history 啦 ，in some ways 嚇，同埋佢嘅 connection with sexualities 啊 ，gender。咁我大家一齊好冇？幫我 well， 即係我幫我 thank you， 呢兩位 guest lecturers 好冇？冇曬聲。系咪要全部唔瞄啊？跟住劈劈劈劈咁样，写呢个应该全部唔瞄，跟住全部人，唔系喺 chat box 度写，佢哋喺 chat box 度写紧咯。系我自己拍自己。<笑>好啊，咁 thank you again， you know， 咁就希望好快大家可以见面啦。Actually， in person，、mm -hmm. in some ways。好啦，我谂咁样，咁我哋今日嘅时间都差唔多，咁多谢 Kalen 同埋 Beatrix share 咗咁多 information。之后大家如果诶、呃，我哋已经 share 咗 Query Library 嘅诶嗰个 website 同埋 Lexicon 嘅 website， 但系如果你哋有更加多嘅问题，譬如话有一啲边一啲 magazine 你哋系想要真系去读嘅，咁都可以同我哋联络，然之后我哋可以即系 link 你哋 up to 啊、um, Beatrix 同埋 Kalen 咯，嗯。我哋今日就 Instagram PM 我哋啊，我、哦、系，嗯，去 follow 佢哋嘅 social media platform please <笑>。Have a good one。嗯。Hi。Thank you everyone。Thank you。